So, you need your pad and paper, you need a cup, you need a straight edge. What I'd like you to do to start with, before you draw your circle, start with a center point. Then you draw a circle, yes. I'll make it make it fairly big. This thing you've been dying to draw from the very first day you got your compass. Literally, I hate these colors. Yeah, this thing it doesn't work on this padding paper. Yep, that's grim. God. Right? This shouldn't be too hard. Yeah, I need new padding, my friend. Yeah, me too. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my the paper from sliding around, you might try doing this over a sheet of plain white paper, which is what I'm doing. Second. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Second, make two marks on the perimeter of the circle. Pick two random points. Yeah. Now, shh, quiet. Set your compass to a distance that's different from the radius of the circle. We don't want to make something that's got 60 degree angles, so make it different. Larger, smaller is fine. Put your compass point on one of the marks and then use that to make a second mark. And then move your compass over to the second mark that you started with and draw a fourth mark. So I've got a total of four marks. Keep your compass the same distance for these two. So we have two pairs of marks that are the same distance apart. And it, well, they can be anywhere on the circle. Is it just a random length? Random length. It should be the same for both, though. Connect them? Connect them up to form two... Two... What are these things? Chords. Excellent. Chords. Two chords. Josh, where did my rule go? Slacker. Quiet, folks. Now, here's your big chance to construct two central angles from these two chords. Connect the endpoints of the chords to the center of the circle. What am I doing? How do you know where the center is? Well, if you didn't mark it to begin with, like I told you to, you have to find that little hole in the paper. I have, I have two little holes. Then you're going to have a problem. Make up a it's got to be the center of your circle. I'm making up a random place. Then you get random results. Yay, I love random results. I drew it. Random results. Mine looks exactly the same as yours. Looks like the Motorola symbol. Mine looks like this. Oh, yeah. I don't even know Batman's ears. Okay. A tie fighter. A bow tie. Josh Wallace. I feel like mine's more elongated. 
It's fine. All right. Question. What do you think is true about these two central angles that you've constructed? Can we use the padding paper to check that? Maybe by folding it? Did you do it wrong? They got lucky. Well, you had side, side, side. Well, Kian. Shh. What? These are all radii. <laughs> Kyle? Josh? Carmen? What? These are all radii. These two chords were constructed to be congruent. So I have two triangles, which are congruent by side, side, side. Therefore, they would have to have congruent central angles by CP, CTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So we've actually verified using patty paper something that we could have easily proven just using triangle conjectures. And this is conjecture 54. Chord central angle conjecture. If two chords in a circle are congruent, then they determine two central angles that are congruent. Congruent. Good. 54. Now, conjecture 55 is the chord arcs conjecture. If two chords in a circle are congruent, then their blanks are congruent. And here we're looking, looking at these arcs intercepted by the chords. And again, you could fold your patty paper over and determine that the darn things are exactly the same. Darn things. If you think that's harsh language. So we have <laughs> Conjecture 55, intercepted arcs are congruent. Let me know when you're all ready with that. And we'll go on to the next. 